Welcome back to Bay Area Focus. Based in Fremont, SAVE has big goals, break cycles of abuse and help survivors heal. Nina Clymer and Dr. Yasi Safinia Davies will tell us about their many services and thank you so much for joining us. Now, this is a pretty important topic because not a lot of people want to talk about domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about your mission. Sure. Well, SAVE believes that everyone has the right to live in peace. And we work hard to offer support, education, as well as shelter so that individuals, families, children can thrive, can end the cycle of violence and heal and reach their potential. Now, do you find a lot of victims coming to you or are you having to do more outreach? Um, I think it's really both. Uh, we are working in tandem with two organizations. Uh, one is Maitri in San Jose that serves the South Asian population. And one is uh, Mua out of San Francisco in Oakland that serves the Latina population. And the South County area of Alameda has a very high South Asian and uh, Hispanic population. So we through a partnership are working with them to reach those communities. So in that case, we're actually doing much outreach. Um, it's difficult to uh, penetrate those communities because of cultural norms about either the family or violence being accepted. Um, in other cases, um, we have a 24-hour hotline. People um, who know about us uh, will call us. We have a new empowerment center where people can drop in. They'll get crisis counseling and advocacy. Uh, we have drop-in support groups. Uh, we have a learning lab where they can come in and use our computers if they want a job search or uh, look for housing or a job. Uh, so it really um, is a combination of both outreach and people coming to us. Okay, and once you do make contact with these victims, what's the biggest challenge, do you think? Um, I think I'll let Yassi answer that mm -hmm. one. It's pretty multi-layered because yeah. we're dealing with poverty, we're dealing with um, people with young ch children, maybe many children, um, people who perhaps don't have an education, so getting a job is very difficult. Housing is a really big challenge. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of people with uh, histories of incarceration. Um, and so it's just so multi-layered to be able to um, just tackle it from one angle. It's pretty difficult. Okay. And you know, uh, when people think about domestic violence, they think about, you know, husbands and wives, but really there is kind of a silent epidemic out there, right? Teenagers mm -hmm. are uh, experiencing domestic violence. Talk about that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So depending on what source you use, um, there are some concerns that it may be one in three teens who are experiencing some form of abuse in a romantic relationship. And we know that there really is very little awareness. Um, there are reports as many as 80 one percent of parents don't even know that it's an issue um, and so this isn't something that um, we're tackling in schools this isn't something that we're tackling in PSAs um, so it's a very very silent epidemic mm -hmm. and so if you are a parent out there what can you be looking for for signs of domestic violence mm -hmm. yeah well um, some of the things that we really like to highlight is dramatic shifts. And of course, there are lots of things that could be causing dramatic shifts in adolescence. Um, but we're looking at um, difficulties with school. We're looking at people who are making real behavioral changes, um, possibly changing the way that they're dressing, demonstrating signs of anxiety if um, the partner is trying to contact them and maybe something is coming in between making that contact, for example. I'm, you know, texting at the, te you know, at the dinner table, and my parents tell me to put my phone away. But the reaction is really big. Um, these kinds of really subtle things, and then over time, it starts to become more dramatic. Perhaps mm -hmm. depression, anxiety. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And to give you just a really simple example, um, I have a teenage child who uh, asked me, "Mom, what should I do? I'm getting texts 24/7." And uh, that also is a sign of control and abuse 
from a teen partner. Okay, so you don't have to be a victim to reach out. You guys have parents uh, who reach out as well, friends who reach out as well, victims? Yes, we have teachers who reach out to us. We have um, school counselors, parents. Um, it, again, parents don't often know that this is happening. Mm -hmm. More often it's the schools and the school counselors that are contacting right. us and saying, please come in and help us. Something mm -hmm. is, I'm really worried about one of my students or, um, and so we try to do the best that we can do, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. and one final thing. Tell me about your Loves Me, Loves Me Not program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's our curriculum that we provide in various schools. Um, primarily, it's happening in health classrooms in high schools, um, and the teachers ask for us to come in, and it's an opportunity to be able to, um, one, engage the students in a dialogue that most people don't have with young people, which is you know, really validating that romance among youth is real. Um, and um, also giving them an opportunity to understand the warning signs and how to really approach a relationship with knowing what their own boundaries are and knowing what they want and what they deserve in a relationship that's healthy. Okay, well hopefully, you know, someone watching this encourages, uh, encourages them to come to you guys if they are going through domestic violence or know someone who's going mm -hmm. through domestic violence. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, Thank you. Nina and Dr. Safinia Davies. For more information on SAVE's programs, log on to save-dv.org. That's save-dv.org. Coming up, a nonprofit reaching Asian communities for a critical cause, stem cell donations.